Welcome back to Lightroom Classic 2020. And today we're gonna to take a look at some more of the panels inside the develop module. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at over here, what's called the history. So you can see I've opened up the history tab over here. The history starts when you import or open up your image. If I can come here to an image that I haven't done anything, you can see there's not any history. And then as I make an adjustment, it applies that adjustment to the image, but it also saves it in the history. So if I go back to this image, you'll notice everything that I've done to this image, it has saved in the history menu. If I wanna go back in time, all I need to do is click on the different adjustments and it will take me back in time as I was editing this image. Now, if you want to save moment in time from the history, so let's say I wanted to save this time right here, you'll notice we have something here called snapshots. Snapshots, there's nothing in there because we haven't created one yet. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the snapshot and we'll just go ahead and do this. You could name this, but I'm not gonna do it for right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit create. Well, I can come here and that's gonna show me this point in time, or I can click on my snapshot and my snapshot's gonna take me back to where I was here. And you can do this as you are toning images. If I wanted to see what I did in the very beginning, I could click here and I could go to the snapshot to see what I did up until that point. So those are snapshots in the history. The history only saves a certain amount of steps. You can change that inside of the Lightroom preferences, but hopefully that kind of gives you a little idea of what you're doing. You also have what's called undo, which is probably the most famous command, which is just Command Z. If you do something and you don't like it, all you need to do is hit Command Z or Control Z on a PC, and that will automatically undo that step. So what I'll do here is just horrible, right? I'll hit Command Z on a Mac and boom, it goes straight back to where it was. That is the undo function and probably the most used function as you are toning. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we've got the basic panel, I'll just close that and we will open up the next thing, which is called the tone curve. The tone curve has two different ways to manipulate this. You can actually come down here use sliders to adjust your curve, or you can physically go up in here into the curve, grab a point and slide that curve up and down. Now this works just like the Photoshop curve. And what we're gonna do here is we are going to reset that. Right up here on the very top is where your highlight data is. And down here in this area is your shadow. And so you can see the histogram we have a lot of dark shadows in this image, so we have a lot of dark areas here. Now, if I wanted to increase my dark areas, I can change that curve, and you can see it's brightening those areas. It's working more here almost in the mid-tones for this, but it's not applying anything to the highlight. I can dial back my highlights more. If I wanna get into my shadow areas more, I can come down here and slide this, and you can see this curve now is affecting more of the darker areas versus highlight areas. So I can come in here to lights and bring my lights back down. And now this curve is saying, we're not doing anything. And then we're opening up the midtones just a little bit. And then the shadows in the darker areas a lot. So you can see that's what it did. And if I come back here to reset settings, we can see what that did by using the history panel. What did I do? Well, this is what I did by using the tone curve. The tone curve is just another way to tone. You could obviously come in here to the basic panel and do the same thing by adjusting this stuff, but some people like to see or adjust the curve, and that is right here inside of Lightroom. All right, we'll go ahead and click off that, and we will go to the next thing, which is HSL or color. And this is your color adjustment. So the first thing that we need to know here is there's a couple different ways in which this works. You can see the panels individually. So hue 
adjusting the color of the color. And that's a little bit weird, but that's what it actually is. So I can actually change the color of oranges by sliding this left or right. And this image, we have a lot of yellow. So if I change this, you can see I'm changing the actual physical color of the color. And truthfully, this is actually very helpful because a lot of times the color is not the right color. So you need to shift it and you're not doing major shifts. It's usually, you know, two, three, four units and that's about it. The next thing is saturation. So saturation is how vibrant it is or how much of the yellow you have. So if I go in here and I dial the saturation out of the yellow, eventually it will become black. Now we're not seeing it totally disappear because there are some other colors in there. Or you can dial in more saturation, which is going to make it more vibrant. The next thing we have is luminance. The luminance is the brightness value of that color. So if I go this way, it's making my yellows brighter. And if I go this way, it's making my yellows darker. So this is the luminance is the brightness value of the color. And then if you click all, it's going to show all the different adjustments in this kind of like linear chart. So you have luminance, then you have the saturation and the hue. But if you want them all to show up, you can do that. Or if you just want individual ones, you can just click on the individual ones. And so this is really, really helpful. The biggest issue in Lightroom is it's global. You can't specifically apply it to an area. This is where Photoshop really comes in handy. But this is a great tool to fix issues and color casts inside of Lightroom. The next thing that we have is called split toning. And so split toning, what it does is that you take a color that you apply to the highlights and you can take a different color or the same color and apply it to the shadows. Then it will kind of tone your image by adding that specific color to the highlights and that specific color to the shadows. I'll kind of show you how this works. Now I'm going to move the saturation up a bit here and I'm going to slide this and you can see it, it's adding a color to the highlights. Now, if you really want to see what the color looks like, you can hold down the Alt Option key and that will make the saturation automatically 100%. If I dial the saturation all the way out and I slide this, you can't see anything. If I hold the Alt Option, you're going to be able to see it because it's doing 100%. What we're going to do is we're going to try to find a color for the highlights. So let's say that we do this and we want this color for the highlight. All right. And we're going to slide this over. That's going to own a little bit of the highlights. And then we're going to come in here to the shadow areas. And in this case, for the shadow areas, we can also pick a color. And so I'll come in here and pick this kind of darker blue color here. And that looks pretty good. So in this case, I was sliding the hue to pick the color. You could manually come in and pick the color. Or you can just come in here and pick one and then in this case i've saved some of the colors up here and this is allowing you to slide the percentage as well i can come here and i can slide some of that out and you can see this is what our image looked like and this is what it looks like with split toning split meaning you're adding a certain color to the highlights and then a certain color overlay to the shadow areas. So to reset your split toning, you just want to hold the alt option and then click everything and it's going to reset it to zero. Uh, I need to come in here and reset this area here. So I'm just going to double click all these because by double clicking any word, it's automatically going to set it or double click saturation and the double click saturation we'll just do kind of a one fatal swoop where it will reset everything back to the beginning. Close those two down. Let's head over to detail. So detail has sharpening. Now, by default, most cameras have an anti-aliasing filter inside the camera. This filter helps reduce noise in your image, allowing you to shoot at higher ISOs. The downfall is, especially on Canon, your image is a little soft. It's not perfectly sharp. You want to sharpen almost every image, and this is where you can do it. You need to understand how to sharpen 
And this is an important aspect. And I will come back and go over sharpening in a separate video because it is sort of complicated. The amount is how much sharpening that you want. You have radius one to one five is good. How much detail you have masking. Masking is what it does is it applies it to specific areas. So if I hold that alt option key again, I slide this. The white areas are where you're gonna get sharpening. The black areas, you're not gonna get sharpening. Basically, you wanna only sharpen edges, the detail. You don't wanna sharpen in here in the middle. There's nothing to sharpen there. So in this case, you don't wanna sharpen those areas. You just wanna sharpen the detailed areas. So usually a stronger mask is gonna be a better option when you're sharpening an image. The next thing that we have is noise reduction. Usually for noise reduction, all you need to do is slide this luminance value. I don't usually have to go any farther past than like 20 or 25 for a lot of noise reduction. But if you do shoot at a high ISO and you have some noise in your image, you can just slide this over and get some noise reduction to help kind of smooth out those values. Go ahead and close this back down. We've got lens correction. So we have two ways to use lens correction. One is by a profile and one is manually where you just manually do it and one by a profile. We're gonna come back to lens correction. It kind of fixes issues that you get when you're shooting with wide angle lens like distortion and stuff like that. And I'll come back in and do a specific video. Um, it's not something that you're gonna use a lot right on the get go as you're learning the program. So we're gonna have a special video dedicated just to using lens correction. Transformation, once again, this will allow you to kind of transform and manipulate the way that the image looks. You can see I'm manipulating just the whole image. This isn't something I think is the most useful for just beginning novices. This is really set up for architectural photography and stuff where you need to slightly adjust the way the image looks. Once again, when I do lens correction, I will be doing transformation as well. Then it seems to be sort of helpful. You have some effects. This is a really good effect. So this is a vignette and you can slide this. It's darkening your outer edge of your image and not darkening the inside. And what this does is kind of funnel your eye to this center point. This doesn't work for all things, but for portraits and landscapes and stuff, a lot of times doing a small vignette, this is obviously a strong vignette. Good. You can go this way and do the opposite where you're making a white vignette on the outside. This is your amount. This changes your midpoint of where it's located, like how far in it's coming or how far out you can slide this way and it's moving that point this way. How round you can make it more square or more round, it's up to you. Feather, so how soft does it come? So if you remove the feather, it's gonna have a hard edge. If you increase the feather, it's gonna have a soft edge. And then you are able to control the highlights within those. There's also a green setting, but we're not gonna get into that today. And the last thing is, calibration this isn't something that I really use at all but what it sort of does is allow you to change the color in specific areas so we can change the color or tint in the shadow areas we can do it in red green and blue if you want to play around with it it's something feel free to come and play around with it but I don't think it's like the most useful tool for toning inside of Lightroom I'm gonna go ahead and reset this all back to zero. And that is the rest of the panel options or panels or adjustments that you have inside of the basic panel in Lightroom 2020. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>